Praise the Lord, my brothers, sisters, and friends. We truly want to thank and praise God for blessing us to come back to you once again. We want to thank God for his many divine blessings that he has bestowed upon us. God is good and his mercy is everlasting. We're coming back tonight with the conclusion of the subject of Geno Jennings' false teachings on water baptism. Let's take our Bibles tonight and let's turn to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. We have been talking about water baptism and we have stated that water baptism is not what saves us. Water baptism is a sign, a symbol, a figure of what saves us. We are saved by spirit baptism, not by water baptism. Water baptism represents spirit baptism. There is no power in water baptism. The power is in spirit baptism. Water baptism only shows uh, that we have already been baptized by one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, into the body of Christ. So we have salvation and regeneration, transformation by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So we're not saved by water baptism. Now there are some out there that think somehow we are saved by this impure water here in the earth. But it is not this impure water that saves us. It is that living water. Jesus is the living water. And he saves us through his spirit. We are baptized into the body of Christ by the one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So if you have not been baptized into the Holy Spirit, uh, if you have not been baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit, you don't have salvation. You can be water baptized as many times as you want to, but water baptism without spirit baptism does not equal salvation. It equals no salvation. All right? You must have spirit baptism in order to be saved. All right? Now let's take our Bibles and go to uh, Matthew chapter uh, 28, verse 18. <coughs> Excuse me, verse 18. And it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in the heaven and in earth. All right, so Jesus had endured the cross. Uh, he had risen from the dead. And God the Father had given him back all the power that he had in the beginning before he came to the earth. So God the Father had made him both Lord and Christ. All right, so he said here that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So Jesus is king and Lord over the earth. All right, now, uh, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So Jesus instructs the disciples to go baptizing by the authority of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He instructed them and gave them power to baptize by the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now we have some out here teaching that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are titles. They teach that they are titles. Uh, but we want you to understand that when the Bible says the Father, it is speaking of the one specific Father. You see, there are many fathers in the world. I am a father, but I am not the Father. You might be a father, but you are not the Father. The Father, when a, a, a person uh, hears the, the words, the, the Father... When a Christian hears the word, the Father, the first thing is going to come to his mind is God the Father. Because the Father is God the Father. The Son, you know, I'm a son, I have sons. You might be a son, you might have sons, but you are not the Son. I'm not the Son. When a Christian hears the Son, he knows that 
we are talking about Jesus Christ. When he hears the Holy Ghost, he knows that we're talking about the Holy Spirit or the Comforter. Because when we said thee, we are specifically talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So these are not titles. These are names. All right, let me say it again. These are names. A word, the word name is any word or title by which any person or thing is known. Let me say that again. The word name or the definition name is any word or title by which a person or a thing is known. All right? So when you say uh, father, that's the name. When you say son, that's the name. When you say Holy Ghost, that's the name. Hallelujah. Because name is any word or title, any word or title by which any person or thing is known. Hallelujah. That's the definition of name. So you cannot say that the Father is not a name. You cannot say that the Son is not a name. You cannot say that the Holy Ghost is not a name. Hallelujah. Because they are. Now, we want to prove that. We want to go to... Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, because we have some out there say you can't baptize in those titles because they are not names, they are titles. Well, we're going to see whether they are names or not. We're going to see whether they are names or not. You say that they are, we're going to see whether they are names or not. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. See, we're going to tear that down because that is not biblical. If Jesus says, go and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, then they have to be names, all right? But what he simply was saying is go baptize by the authority of. I am Jesus Christ, and I have been given all power and authority. Now I'm giving you disciples the authority to go baptize in the name of Jesus by the authority of. That's, that's what it simply means, by the authority of. Stop in the name of the law by the authority of the law. Oh, hallelujah. All right, First uh, John chapter 5, verse 7. We hope you have your Bibles tonight and you're turning with us to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. <clears throat> All right, we hope you have it. This is what it says. It says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Now, he says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And he told us over here uh, to go back, go ye therefore and, bapt and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, who is God the Father, the Son, who is the Word. Remember, the Word became the Son. All right, so that's the same person. And the Holy Ghost. So we see the three that he told us to go baptizing in the name of, of the three over here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, that bear record in heaven. They have a record in heaven. Hallelujah. So they can't just be titles. They can't just be titles that don't mean anything. Because if they were titles and not names, then you would have to call the three that bear record in heaven titles. You would have to call them titles. And titles mean nothing. Because you say, uh, those are titles and not names. All right? So uh, we see the significance in those three, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The reason why it says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost because it was the Word in the beginning. The Word is eternal, and the Word came and got into, that, into the body that was prepared for the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? And became the Son. Hallelujah. So, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right? So, we see those three bear record in heaven. All right? Now, let's leave there and let's go to, um, uh, let's, let's go to Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. 
Hallelujah. Chapter 9, verse 6. All right, we hope you're there. Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And this is what it says. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now let's go back to the beginning of this verse because you said that uh, Father is not a name. You said that Father is a title, is not a name. Well, let's, let's see what verse 6 says. For unto us a son is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. All right? I'm sorry, upon his shoulder. And his name, not his title, but his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Everlasting Father. So Father is a name. Father is a name. And the Father is everlasting. Everlasting Father is a name. Yet you say Father is a title. But his name, Jesus' name is Everlasting Father. That's what the Word says. That's what the Bible says. Now, how are you going to dispute that? See, that just tears down what you said, that these are titles. You said these are titles, and I told you that the word name, a name is any word or title. Any word or title by which any person or thing is known is considered to be a name. So we see that a name is Father. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Father is a name. Jesus' name is Father, everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Jesus is the everlasting Father. Why? Because he is God. God the Father is the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. Now, let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. They said you cannot baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And if you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, your baptism is not valid. Well, that's a lie. That's a lie. My baptism is valid. If anything, your baptism is not valid. All right? Because you're only recognizing Jesus. And Jesus is the one that told you, authorized the disciples to baptize in all three. He, he is the one that, that authorized them, told them to baptize in all three. Not only in his name, but in the Father's name and the name of the Holy Ghost. All right? He said, I give you the authority to baptize in all three. Hallelujah. He always recognized the Father. All right? What did we say? We said our uh, Revelation chapter 19, 19, verse 3. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 19, verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 13. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. All right, we hope you have it. It says, uh, And he was clothed with the vesta dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And his name is called the Word of God. So, Jesus' name is called the Word of God. So, Jesus is the Word of God. He is the Word of God. Remember? Uh, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. So the, the, the Word is Jesus. Jesus is the Word. So Jesus' name is called the Word of God. His name is not only called Jesus, but his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God is his name. Hallelujah. So 
we see that a name can be any word or title by which any person or thing is known. Hallelujah. So you, you cannot say that a person's baptism is invalid because they baptize in what you call titles, because titles can be a name, and we just proved to you that titles can be names. Hallelujah. All right. Now, we want to leave there, and we want to go to... Um, uh, we need to understand that word is a name. Word is a name. Because Jesus' name is, he shall be called the word of God. So Jesus' name is word. All right? He's the word of God. Uh, and father is also a name. Father is also a name. Father is not just a title. It is a name. And we have proven to you according to the scripture. The same scripture that you want to run over there to prove that Jesus is uh, the Father, is the everlasting Father. I guess you didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't think uh, uh, that he's out, that his name is everlasting Father. That that same scripture said that he is the everlasting Father. That his name is the everlasting Father. I guess you didn't think about that. All right, now let's go to uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 38. Uh, hallelujah. We hope you have your Bibles tonight. You turn it to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Now we have been talking about water baptism, and this is one of the scriptures that we uh, usually will go to when we want to talk about water baptism. All right, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And it says, uh, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right, now we need to understand here that when Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions, I'm sorry, for the remission of sins. Now, you need to understand that here, uh, remission of sins does not come by water baptism. The remission of sins come by the repentance. It comes by the way of repentance. When you repent, salvation is granted unto you because you repent, not because you are baptized in water. All right? Now, in Acts chapter 2.38, he is talking about water baptism. But the baptism that's going to remit your sins is going to be in the process of spirit baptism. All that's going to be done in the process of spirit baptism. Hallelujah. The, re the remission of sins, the granting life is all going to be done through the process of the regenerating and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It's not going to have anything to do with water baptism. See, we still got these people who don't understand Scripture. They want to throw something in that we do to try to bring about salvation. There is nothing we can do to bring about salvation besides having faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and repenting. Believing and repentance is the only thing that we have to do with bringing on salvation. Water baptism has absolutely nothing to do with our salvation. We receive salvation and then we get water baptism. A hallelujah. We get water baptism after we have received salvation. After God, through the Holy Spirit, 
has regenerated us. That's when we get water baptism. All right? It's apart from salvation. It's salvation and water baptism. All right? Water baptism is not included in the plan of salvation. Salvation is what God does. Water baptism is what we do. Two different agents. Oh, hallelujah. We need to understand that. So when we run to Acts uh, 2.38, uh, we need to understand that, that uh, it, is, it is through the repenting, through the repenting, that we are saved. And then after we are saved, we get baptized. All right? And when it said baptize uh, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, that means by the authority of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean you got to say, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. No. Your sins has already been remitted before you baptized. Baptism follows salvation because baptism is an outward sign of a genuine change. You're supposed to have already been saved by grace through faith before you get baptism. All right? Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, this is what Peter was telling them. But we don't get it like that today. Today we get saved, baptized into the body of Christ, given the Holy Spirit, then water baptism. Hallelujah. For those of us that believe in a second work of grace, where we are, are baptized into the Holy Spirit, not baptized into the body of Christ. We already have that, but baptized in the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ for power to, to become an effective witness, then we get that on down the road. All right? Unless you get it before water baptism. Hallelujah. Most people get it later on. Hallelujah. So we're taking time out to explain Acts 2.38. People always want to run there and talk about, you see, you see baptism uh, remits sins. A baptism is for the remission of sin. No, it's not. No, it's not. You don't know how to rightly, defi rightly divide the scriptures. You don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Water baptism can't remit anybody's sins. That's a lie. All right? You, you have not been taught correctly if you have been taught that your sins are washed away in the water. That's a lie. Not washed away in that impure water, but washed away in that pure water that came from the side of Jesus Christ and all that's done in the regeneration process, in the new birth process. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit is baptizing you into the body of Christ, that's when all that is done. That's done from heaven. That's not done in, in impure water from the, from the earth. That's a sign and a symbol, a figure, a shadow. Hallelujah. What has already taken place through spirit baptism. So it's sad how many of you out there are ignorant of the Word of God, how ignorant you are uh, of concerning the process of salvation or the salvation process. Many of you have not been taught correctly. Hallelujah. All right, now we're going to go to Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Acts chapter 22, verse 16, and we're going to bring this lesson to a close on tonight. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Verse 16, we want to touch on all these scriptures that uh, most people want to run to when they try to prove that water baptism uh, saves us. Or we have to have water baptism and spirit baptism. No, we don't. We have to have spirit baptism. Now, we get water baptism because, based on the scriptures, uh, we are encouraged to, to get water baptism, but water baptism does not save. All right? It is a sign and a symbol of what has already taken place. As Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, it is a figure, all right? It is a figure. It is the like figure. Hallelujah. It's not the thing that saves, but it's like the thing that saves. Hallelujah. See, water baptism shows what spirit baptism does. See, it shows what the spirit does. Hallelujah bury you with Christ and bring you up in the newness of life. That's all water baptism does. Water baptism doesn't do that. 
it shows what the spirit does. Hallelujah. There's no power in the water. The power is in the spirit. The power is in the blood. The power is in the water that came from the side of Jesus. The power is in the blood that came from the body of Jesus. And that's done through by the way of the spirit. It has nothing to do with that water, with that baptismal water in the pool. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, so we're looking at Acts chapter 22, verse 16. We hope you have your Bibles. You turn to Acts chapter 22, verse 16. All right, this is what it says. It says, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. All right, let's go back and look at that again. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, this is this is part of the story that Apostle Paul, uh, uh, the testimony of Saul when he was converted to Paul. All right? He, he is in a roundabout way giving his testimony. Now, you don't really get things in order in chapter 22 in order to see the order in which things happen to, to uh, Paul, or Saul, you would have to go back to chapter 9. See, a lot of the people who believe the water baptism saves, they'll run over here and try to show or use this scripture to show where Apostle Paul was baptized and that's how he got saved. That's how his sins got washed away. Absolutely not. You need to go to Acts chapter 9 in order to see the order of events that happened. See, you run over here and you'll let them deceive you to make you think that it was the baptism. The water baptism, water baptism that saved Paul. Absolutely not. So we have to go back to chapter 9. And to see the order in which Paul or Saul, that says Saul was saved and became Paul. So let's go back to Acts chapter 9. But before we go back to Acts chapter 9, let's just look at this. It says in 22.16, And now why tarriest thou? Why do you delay? Or why do you wait? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. How? By calling on the name of the Lord. See, the baptism didn't wash away his sins. Calling on the name of the Lord is what washed away his sins. Hallelujah. He called on the name of the Lord and he got his sins forgiven. We used to sing a song. There's no harm done calling on Jesus. There's no harm done calling on the Lord. I got my sins forgiven. Calling on the name of Jesus. I got my sins forgiven. By calling on the name of the Lord. So you get your sins forgiven by calling on the name of the Lord. Not by being water baptized. But if you don't watch. You'll let them make you believe that the reason why Paul got his sins remitted or washed away was by the water baptism. Absolutely not. It was by the calling on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark 1, 4 before we go to Acts chapter 9. Let's, let's, let's turn to Mark chapter 1, verse 4. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 1, verse 4. And let's see what it says. It says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. John did baptize in the wilderness, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So baptism of repentance it is what? Remit sin. The fact that you repent, that brings about the remission of the sins, not baptism in water. All right? Hallelujah. So it is the baptism of repentance that remits sin, not baptism of water. Hallelujah. But the water baptism is a demonstration of what repentance 
through the power of the Holy Ghost brings about remittance of sin. All right? Now, let's look at... um. Uh, Let's look at uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 17. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. Acts chapter 9, verse 17. All right, Acts chapter 9, uh, verse 17. This is what it says. It says, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, Brother Saul. Why do you think he called him Brother Saul? Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Now, if you look at Acts chapter 19, you would think he was baptized first. But according to the order of what happened in Acts chapter 9, he was baptized at last. Baptism was the last thing that happened. All right? He was saved. He was uh, healed. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he was baptized. He was saved. He was healed. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he was baptized. He got baptism last. So baptism comes after salvation. All right? Not before salvation. Nobody gets baptism. Nobody gets uh, baptism before salvation and are saved. All right? Nobody gets baptism before salvation and are saved. If you get baptism before you're saved, you're not saved. You, you, you're just a wet devil. You were a dry devil. Now you're just a wet devil. You must have salvation and then get baptized. Hallelujah. Because water baptism shows that you have already been baptized into the body of Christ. You have been baptized into Christ. You're only saved when you're baptized into Christ. All right, not baptized into water, baptized into Christ. Hallelujah. So when we go to Romans 6 and it, and it says, uh, those of you that have been baptized into Christ, that's not talking about water baptism. Somebody said, well, this is water baptism. Let's run to Romans 6 again real quick. Let's go to Romans chapter 6 because we still got people who don't understand the scriptures. They can't write or divide the word of truth. We got these people still out there teaching water baptism saves you. We want to make it plain that you can't prove that anywhere in the scriptures. All right? Look at uh, chapter 6 and look at verse 4. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. It didn't say baptized into water. We, we, we find too many of you still want to run over there and say, this is water baptism. This is not talking about water baptism. This is talking about spirit baptism. When you are baptized into Jesus Christ, you're not baptized into water. You are baptized into Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit because you have been baptized into the body of Christ. You're not baptized into Jesus Christ unless you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. So you can't be into Jesus Christ unless you're in the body of Jesus Christ, unless you're in the church. That's the only way you can be baptized into Jesus Christ. Baptized into Jesus Christ is not the same as being baptized into water. I want to make that clear. All right? You'll die and go to hell believing that garbage. That's all it is, is garbage. Anything 
outside of the true inspired word of God is garbage because you're trying to go another way. It's important that you pay attention to what the, what the scripture said. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. How do you get baptized into Jesus Christ? Don't tell me about being water baptized. Because a whole lot of folk have been water baptized and still don't know Jesus Christ. Still don't have Jesus Christ. Still can't walk in the newness of life. We talked about that the last time. Hallelujah. All right. Now, before we go any further, I want us to go to another scripture that we went to. Hallelujah. We're going to close this out on tonight. I want us to go to Acts. I'm sorry, not Acts. I want us to go to St. John chapter 3 again, and I want us to look at verse 5. St. John chapter 3, verse 5. Hallelujah. Because I want to make some comments on this scripture again. St. John chapter 3, verse 5. All right, St. John chapter 3, verse 5. This is what it says. And Jesus uh, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. All right? Now, as we stated on the last time, born of the water does not mean water baptism. Once again, you would have to read water baptism into that scripture. That has nothing to do with water baptism. St. John 3 and 5 has nothing to do with water baptism. All right? It has to do with water, but it's not water baptism. Once again, it's the water that you come through when you are born into the world. All right? Once again, Jesus was talking about two kinds of birth. Natural birth, spiritual birth. Now, there are some people who would look on the spiritual side when they look at this water here and they will say, well, this is the word of God. Now, let me say this. You can explain that spiritually speaking because that is what happens. You are born again of the word. You are born of Christ. You are born of the written word and the living word all right you have to get the written word and of course it's the living word that that gives you salvation through the holy spirit so you can use that but you have to make a spiritual application to that when you say that water there when jesus said told nicodemus except the man be born of water you can take that and apply that on the spiritual side see you have a spiritual side and you have a a natural side, all right? First natural and then spiritual. Naturally, Jesus was talking about the water from the mother's womb, all right? But spiritually speaking, it is the water of the word, of life, that gives you salvation, all right? Through the spirit, hallelujah. So a person is not incorrect when they say, you are born again by the word, but they are incorrect when they make that application there on the natural side. See, on the natural side, Nicodemus can only perceive going back a second time into his mother's womb. And that's what Jesus, he addressed that. That's what he meant when he said of the water. But he also addressed the second birth or the rebirth of the spirit. All right. So you might have heard me mention that on the spiritual side, if I want to make a spiritual application, I would use the word as the water of life. All right? I would use the word as the water of life. But on the natural side, I'm using the water that comes from the mother's uh, womb. All right? A hallelujah. Now, a hallelujah. All right? So, we have to understand that it is uh, the water from the side of Jesus and the blood from the body of Jesus that causes salvation. It has nothing to do with the water in the baptismal pool. That's just impure water that comes from the earth that demonstrates something, that shows something. There is no power in the water. All right? No power in the water. No blood takes place in the water. All of that is something some man has come up with. Some man has contrived. All right? We find no evidence of that in the Word of God. 
Anybody out there teaching that, that's apostolic teaching. That's Geno, Genesis teaching. That's uh, Kendrick Murray teaching. That's that one that's apostolic teaching. And they would tell you that you're not saved and you're not going to heaven unless you're baptized in Jesus' name. Well, all that is a lie. Let me say that again. All that is a lie. Yes, I stand on that and I will stand on that and preach that until I die because there is no biblical proof. There is no Bible application to that or for that. All right? Hallelujah. The only baptism that's going to get you from here to up there is spirit baptism. Born again. Born from above. Born from heaven. That's what it means. Except a man be born again. Born from up there. Hallelujah. And given to you while you're down here. That's the born again process. That's the rejuvenation process. That's the regeneration process. That's the transformation process. That's the born again process. All right? Uh, hallelujah. So we truly thank and praise God for the word of God. All right? Now we're going to leave this subject on tonight. And we're going to uh, leave here and uh, <clears throat> believe that you've gotten a good understanding of water baptism. And regardless to who tells you that you have to be baptized again uh, in the name of Jesus or in any, anybody else's name, uh, ignore them because water baptism doesn't save you. Water baptism only demonstrates what has already taken place in your life, and that is spirit baptism. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.